82, tomorrow's high 80. In Chicago. That's just after Marketplace, which begins at 6.30 tonight, and right now the time is 5.21. Support for this program comes from your WBEZ membership and the Poetry Foundation, celebrating 100 years of Poetry Magazine online at poetryfoundation.org. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney is starting to talk more about his religion, but he has to be careful about the details. If he starts opening the door to the specifics of Mormon theology, questions about the Book of Mormon versus the Bible, then he's in very dangerous territory. I'm David Green. The risks and benefits of highlighting Romney's faith in the next morning edition of Club Journals. Beginning at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning on WBEZ Chicago. It's 78 degrees right now. Some cab drivers fuming, particularly over incentives to put natural gas vehicles on the road. WBEZ's Northside Bureau reporter Odette Youssef has the story. Okay, so it's 2.40. We got here at 1 o'clock, and you've just finally been able to hit the accelerator, and we're moving now. So where, where are we going to be turning right now? Right here. This is Sandra Vidikic. To pick up the ticket, we can either choose to go to Terminal 5, you see this light over here, straight? Or we wait over there to go through mile one, two, or three. We're at O'Hare Airport and just spent the last hour and a half waiting in a parking lot. There are maybe 600 cabs there. This is what cab drivers do every time they go to the airport. They wait in lines at the lot for hours until they're called up to a terminal to finally pick up a fare. But last year, the city turned that system on its head. CNG drivers, natural gas vehicle, they have preference to go to pick up, they don't, they don't have to wait like the rest of us. They just go in, we call up the customers. While we still wait, they go to the downtown, come back again, pick up another customers while we still waiting here. To understand what's going on, you have to know a little about Chicago's green taxi program. The city wants to swap out old carbon-emitting cabs for newer, cleaner fuel vehicles. It's put nearly a thousand hybrids on the road, and it wants more taxis that run on compressed natural gas, the same gas that burns on stoves. So it introduced some incentives. One was for cab owners, federal subsidies to buy CNG vehicles or to convert existing taxis to natural gas. But at the beginning, drivers wouldn't go near them not being able to get to a gas station on every corner like you can with a gasoline vehicle would make them a little little more nervous. This is Rosemary Krimble, Commissioner of Chicago's Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection. Her department came up with this idea. Cab drivers who lease CNG cars could cut to the front of the line at the airports, no waiting in the lot. This was a sweet deal. Picking up an airport fare that goes downtown lets you pocket 40 bucks. And it worked. Take Max Johnson. Johnson's been driving a CNG for three months. Before that, he drove a regular gasoline taxi. I caught him filling up at one of only two public CNG fueling stations downtown. I asked him why he made the switch. Uh, I did it because uh, you can go through the short trip at the, at the airport. Also, the gas is a lot cheaper, too. No joke. Here he was paying two sixty-five dollars for the equivalent of a gallon. Johnson said the switch to CNG completely changed how and where he drives to make money. How many times are you going to the airport in a week now? Um, in a week, I don't know. It's, it's more like more it's three a day now. I can do at least three or four a day. And whereas before, you know, I might be able to get one or two in a day. This is exactly what ticks off Vidikic and other drivers. They say CNGs are making more and more trips to the airport, stealing their fares. Johnson says he gets that gripe. I used to be one of those drivers. You know, I used to sit there and watch, you know, the CNG cars go by, and you know, and it's and you know, opportunity came up. You know, my company started getting CNGs. I noticed it. I asked them. They was like, put your name on the list, and when your name comes up, you can get one. See, that's the other thing about this program is that there aren't enough CNG cabs to go around. 
The city started the incentive August last year. That month, there were only 14 CNG caps in the fleet. Today, there are 282, and drivers are clamoring for more. It's easy to see why. I did the math with one CNG driver. Between lower gas prices and more frequent airport trips, he's pulling in $400 more per week than he did with a gasoline vehicle. Other cabbies look at that, and they say it's totally unfair. They say he's just a regular cab driver like us. He leases his vehicle like us. So why is it okay for him to make more money in less time? Here's what Commissioner Crimble says about that. It may be perceived as unfair, but I will tell you, to be perfectly honest, I'm rather impressed by the um, business acumen of those drivers. So the question is, what happens when there are so many CNGs in the fleet that the airport incentive stops? Will the drivers still want those cars? If they stop the drive through I am going to drop the car. This is Babatunde Dada, another CNG cab driver. He says there are two problems with the CNGs. First, there aren't enough fueling stations, so he can't take fares to faraway places if he can't find fuel on his way back. Second, the existing fueling pumps are often broken. So the only incentive I have right now is if I go to O'Hare, I can drive through and give me a short period. So you can stop it. I drop Commissioner Crimble says that's not a problem. There are so many licensed public chauffeurs in Chicago that somebody would take those cars. But the city's not fixing the bigger hangup that kept cabbies from driving CNGs in the beginning. Not enough fueling stations. In the meantime, Chicago recently renewed the airport incentive. But it's in. And it's causing a headache but at the in. airport. The CNGs, they're killing us. This guy directs cabs coming into the airport terminals at O'Hare. He didn't want to give his full name, and we didn't want to use his first name because we worried he'd get in trouble for talking with us. I don't bother even checking them anymore. See, airport attendants are supposed to check on every cab that claims to be a CNG before letting them through the short trip lane. But with so many of these cars coming through these days, his concern is to keep the flow going. There's no time to check them. We have to hold the shorts because there's so many CNGs. Stop everything from coming into the terminals. Because this terminal is overloaded. We cannot overload this terminal. The pilot program expires in December, but Vidikic and others want it to stop sooner. They've put together a petition, and they're thinking of filing a lawsuit for lost wages. Odette Youssef, WBEZ. It's 528. Good evening. You're listening to All Things Considered on WBEZ. Stay tuned. In just a couple of minutes, we will hear NPR News headlines followed by WBEZ Newscast. But first, let's take a look at traffic. Here's Jill Egan. We've got good news for United Airlines flights. The main computer system is working once again nationwide for United. It was down a while, though, so expect long delays on United flights. Um, O'Hare 27, 12 to the junction. Inbound 36, O'Hare to downtown. 18 from the junction in. The Eisenhower's 38 out to Wolf, 53 to Thorndale. In from Thorndale, 47 and 29 from Wolf in. Stevenson out to the Tri State, 33 and 45 out to 355. Dan Ryan is 25 either way. Southbound Lakeshore Drive, heavy approaching Chicago. And south on the south end, there's an accident around Marquette. Northbound's heavy through Grant Park and Randolph to Chicago. Support for traffic on WBEZ is provided by Quaker State, offering Quaker State Defy motor oil. Information at QuakerState.com. I'm Jill Egan, WBEZ. Thank you, Jill. WBEZ is supported by Navy Pier, featuring big art in Gateway Park, an annual outdoor art exhibition. On display is a 30-foot-high sculpture by Roy Lichtenstein entitled Brushstroke Group. On display now through October. More at NavyPier.com. Support for this program comes from your WBEZ membership, other member stations, and Ancestry.com. For people to discover family history that didn't get passed down from grandma, more online at TryAncestry.com. The investment firm of Raymond James Wealth Management Banking and Capital Markets. Details on finding a local advisor at LifeWellPlan.com. And Unisys Corporation committed to providing IT solutions to contribute to a safer and more secure connected world. More at Unisys.com. NPR News in Washington, I'm Jamie McIntyre. Republican delegates gathered in Tampa, Florida, have just officially nominated Mitt Romney as their presidential candidate. New Jersey, 50, Romney. 
Romney. In the roll call of states this afternoon, that's New Jersey putting Romney over the top. Republican National Committee Chairman Ryan Priebus says the GOP is offering that clear choice. We have a message for America. Elect Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan, and they will get this country working again. Romney is scheduled to accept his party's nomination in a speech Thursday night. Hurricane Isaac is continuing its slow motion approach toward the Louisiana coast with top winds of 75 miles per hour. National Hurricane Center Director Rick Nabb says because the storm is so big and so slow, it could dump a lot of rain before moving on. It's been moving around 10 miles an hour. It could even slow down a little more uh, over the next couple of days. If you look at our forecast path out through Thursday morning, it, uh, the center might not still be out of Louisiana yet. New Orleans is in much better shape to handle a minimal hurricane like Isaac after $14 billion worth of levy improvements. But Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal is preparing for the worst.